What's the distribution landscape look like for smaller independent films in 2023? All right, and let's get into it. I'm Jay Horton. I make movies that make money. This is how. Let's talk for a second about traditional distribution. Traditional distribution, contrary to some popular negative rhetoric, is not dead. In fact, it's where most independent films that are earning any kind of substantial money do so. In fact, in some cases, it's the only chance some bigger indie films have to recoup and make a sizable profit. If your film's budget is closing in on $100,000 or over, or hell, maybe even $50,000 these days, I still see traditional distribution as probably your best chance for full recoupment, generally speaking. Of course, it's also the riskiest in terms of getting ripped off or raked over the coals by a predatory distributor, but that's what due diligence is for. With traditional distribution, you license your movie to a company that places your movie into the marketplace and hopefully helps you market it. Though in terms of distributors marketing smaller films, I'll say it straight out. They either don't or the marketing that they do do is far from the value of the sales fees they typically charge. Which is why you'll hear me talking about indie rights so much. You know, they charge no sales fees. Sure, a big chunk of the marketing then falls on the filmmaker, but I'd rather go with someone transparent where I know what I'm going to have to do than a distributor that claims to cover all or most of the marketing and then fails to do so. And while most smaller distributors' marketing is pretty much worthless, they are still the best way to get into the market. I love FilmHub, but I'll never get on Pluto there. At least, not for now. With FilmHub, you'll never get on Hulu or Shudder. You'll never make a big cable sale. And for a lot of smaller indie stuff, that's just fine and dandy, because these movies were never going to get those deals anyway. I put up almost all of my documentaries on FilmHub, but to be honest, at the scale I make them, they were never going to be on Hulu anyway, or Netflix, or something like that. So FilmHub is the best bet for those movies, and who knows, over time that may change. Maybe larger streamers like Hulu will start to utilize them, but for now, not so much. So let's talk a little bit about the pay. One of the first questions a lot of filmmakers will ask is about MGs minimum guarantees. Some will ask, what about MGs? And in the past, I've said things like independent films really don't see a lot of MGs anymore. They're not quite as unique as, say, a unicorn, but they're pretty uncommon in indies at a lower level. But that may be changing. Over the last year, I'm starting to hear more and more stories of filmmakers getting small, like $5,000 to $10,000 MGs or advances from some distributors on little movies. Now, some will say hogwash. You have to have huge production value or name talent to get an MG, but that really doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Two examples that I know of for sure this year, small films that got minimum guarantee offers, they had no stars, no Sundance Tribeca runs. They were just solidly made, quirky little indie films. And one of them was a straight up drama. You know, not horror, not comedy, not, you know, one of the more popular things. So, how does money usually work with distributors? If there is no MG or advance, most distributors pay on a revenue split basis after their distribution fees are recouped except for a few select distributors that charge no fees, like indie rights. There are a few distributors that may ask filmmakers for these fees up front. If you get such an offer, run for the hills. Filmmakers should never pay anyone up front to distribute their film. In this day and age, that is straight up criminal. As far as the revenue split goes, Typically, the distributor's cut is between 20 and 40%, leaving the rest for the filmmakers. If you get an offer that's asking for anything much higher than that, they better be bringing something pretty damn substantial to the table in terms of platform placement or marketing. And if so, you need to get that in writing. So for the distributors that charge the sales fees, what are these costs about? Poster art, trailers, taking your movie out to market, these things can be very expensive. Now, 
most reputable distributors will cap these costs. When you're dealing with a movie that's under $50,000, you should be very weary of any contract that caps sales fees any higher than $10,000. If the sales fees are higher than that at that level, there's a good chance that you'll see very little, if any, profits. Unless you're talking about a high six-figure budget with a very robust promotional budget and stars, any cap over $20,000 to me is a major red flag. This is one of the ways that unscrupulous distributors keep from paying out the filmmakers. A $20,000 marketing fee for a $25,000 to $75,000 movie is just ridiculous. It's laughable. Because, like I mentioned before, with movies at this level, distributors don't spend anywhere close to that. And if they say they do, they're most likely lying. And yes, markets are costly, but they have plenty of other movies in their library to split those costs with you. 25k is a ripoff at this level. But this is how predatory distributors do their thing. Basically, a bad distributor will inflate their expenses with a high sales cap so that your movie never sees a profit. It's perpetually in the red. In the past few years, I think we've seen some major shifts in traditional distribution. For example, physical DVD and Blu-ray sales are just not what they used to be. Not quite dead yet, but definitely lower than they were. Theatrical distribution is a huge question mark right now for smaller movies. Though, many think that with studios putting less movies into theaters, that there is an opportunity there for smaller films. Unfortunately, I really don't know yet just how to take advantage of that. When it comes to independent film distribution, really right now, streaming is the thing. It has exploded. There are more platforms available now than ever before, and the numbers are growing daily. But the downside to this streaming explosion and the fact that movies are cheaper and cheaper to make is that the sheer amount of them has also exploded. So we have more movies and more places to view it. And this has led to an overall devaluation of independent films. In today's market, smaller films are just worth less. So they're earning less. Look at Amazon. Five years ago, Amazon was paying over 12 cents per hour streamed on Prime. Which, granted, that sounds small, but competent films were cleaning up. If that rate hadn't dropped with all the documentaries I made between 2020 and 2023, I'd be a rich man. Titles that I've released in the last two years that made less than $20,000 would have easily been in the six-figure range a few years back. For me, this basically means that I've had to make documentaries cheaper and more often than I used to in order to see the same returns. Or I could try to make less and spend more time on them. And honestly, I'm trying a little of both. I continue to knock out most of my documentaries pretty cheap and fast. But when it comes to my narrative features, I do no more than one a year, maybe every year and a half. And I spend a lot more money and time on those narratives in hope that they'll break through and earn more. Keep a close eye on this channel over the next year and you'll see how that's working out because I'm going to do a ton of videos on how Craving is performing. But over the past three years, for the most part, my revenue has mostly come from making the documentaries as cheaply as possible and quickly as possible. And some filmmakers will say, well, that's quantity over quality and it's unacceptable. And honestly, I do get that. I understand that way of thinking and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I'm a professional filmmaker. I love making movies. I really do. But it is also a business for me and truthfully, I love making money with them too. And at least for me, I've discovered that I can still get my rocks off creatively on a lower budget and quicker timeframes. And really, when it comes down to it, I would rather be out here doing it, making movies, making a living off my movies, even if they're smaller, cheaper movies. I'd rather be making those than sitting on the sidelines complaining about the sad state of independent film and waiting for my million dollar budget to come through. But that's me. I am a doer. And if you want to make it as an indie filmmaker, the only way to do so is to make movies.